Hello everyone, this is Mutant Nuts. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we'll be continuing the OAS Top 10 2021 video series. Today we'll be looking at the seventh risk, that is identification and authentication failures. The previous six I've covered in the previous videos. Y'all can go and check that out. So let's look at the comparison over here from 2017. And it looks like broken authentication was in position two. Uh, in 2017 and it has now moved down to position 7 in 2021 as identification and authentication failures. So let's just get started. So first thing we need to understand what is identification and authentication. So before any authentication takes place there's an identification which actually occurs. So that is basically providing the ID that is the user ID, account ID, email ID and so on. So this ID will always be unique and you know one ID is allocated to one user or something. So it's going to be unique always. And once the user is identified like by providing the ID then comes authentication that okay you are claiming to be this particular user but are you this user or not? So that's where authentication comes in place. So they ask for password, which is secret or like an OTP pin or, so, or something similar to that. So that means it will actually confirm that are you the user who you are claiming to be? So this is identification authentication and your failures do occur. So let's look at that. So first thing is many a times what happens that the web application does not you know have any password in place so it's just like you know you have the user id to uh, you know enter the user id and you'll get some details or something so mainly seen on you know some results websites or something where the students uh, where results are uh, you know displayed or something of that sort and at times it does happen that uh, the username and password fields are present but the username field only is being validated on the server. So the password, even though the field is present, the server is not validating that. It's not checking for that. So even if you just enter username, that's it. And you just send a request, uh, you know, maybe the server will respond with like, okay, successful request or something. And at times it happens, maybe the password, there is something required on the password. So if, if there is a wrong password in place over there, the server will not validate the password. It will just check the username and it will provide uh, you know, a successful request and like authentication successful or something of that sort. Then comes weak password is allowed. So basically, whenever there's an application in place and when there's an account creation which takes place or whenever the user is creating a password, that means there has to be some password policy in place because if there is no password policy in place some users they'll be too lazy and they'll just enter something like one two three and you know one two something of that sort very simple password which can easily be like you know guessed or you know there can be a brute force attacks done over there to guess that password so that's why there are some password complexity like usually it's like six to eight minimum characters and having capital letters as well as small letters and later on there are something like uh, alphanumeric so that means there are some numbers as well and then later on special characters have to be added as well to increase the complexity and so on and sometimes there are such things like you know you cannot whenever there's a password reset or something done or you're changing the password you cannot use the previous password or something so those additional uh, protections also may be in place but yes weak passwords should not be permitted they should obviously have some strong password policy and then later on comes there's no protection against brute force attacks so when a username and password fields are present they can be vulnerable to brute force attacks so if there is no protection against it the user if you know somehow some uh, user will get access to some user id or something a malicious user can actually perform a brute force attack on that particular web application and eventually later he'll find out the password because brute force will go for all possible combination of passwords and they can even use a dictionary attack where you, they can use the most common password list or something and try to do that but the web application has to uh, you know does allow this particular activity why because if this is done the user may send like thousands of requests in one second and you know it should avoid doing that so 
basically whenever the user will send like five incorrect attempts for that user id then the application should uh, not allow that user from logging in for like few minutes and then eventually you know it may increase the time and so on that way so this protection should be in place so that users don't brute force the passwords uh, or something of that sort so then there is no multi-factor authentication in place so basically whenever the user's password is compromised in some or the other way like some other application was compromised or you know by brute force attack dictionary attack and so on so that time the malicious users can use this particular credentials and get access to the application because there's no additional security mechanism in place to you know provide further authentication like you know to protect that particular user account so if multi-factor was in place even though the malicious user enters the right credentials the registered user will get a one-time password or something to enter so that the server will be like you know this is the actual intended user and i'll provide authentication so if that is present so there is no protection against uh, this uh, username and password itself and then again this comes in authentication failures then there is session id reuse so basically whenever the user logs in into the web application the username and password is sent maybe at the start of the request whenever he's trying to perform a login then the server will create a session id and it will send it to the client that is the user and post that the client the web browser will actually send the request along with that session id so once the server receives that session id always it knows that this is the actual intended user and that is the session id which is being used so that's how the you know the communication happens and by chance if the session id what is generated by the server is actually reused in a way that server does not you know invalidate the session id and it keeps the same session id for that user on the server end and it you know after every logout it is only telling the browser to clear that session id so that means the user if they try to connect again and the server will try to send the same session id and so on so basically if the session id is compromised in any way then this particular session id can be used by other users claim you know as their own session id and they will actually be you know uh, doing request as a first user whose session id was compromised so that's why it should not be reused and there has to be like you know randomly generated session id and with a proper complexity and so on so then comes session id in url so many times it may happen that the session id itself is displayed on the get request on the url like suppose there's a banking application and over there there's like make payment.php with a question mark and then later on there is something like uh, ses id or something is equal to and there's a session id present on the url itself so what happens on the url if the user decides to bookmark that particular link because it's like make payment i use it very frequently i'll bookmark that particular link or maybe he's trying to share this link to a friend or someone and he's not very tech savvy the first user so if that user is like, hey, I'll uh, share the link. How do you make payments on this particular application? And the session ID gets compromised over there. And the second user is actually knows what that is. And he used that particular link itself. And he's like, hey, uh, I'm actually able to log in as a first user and make payments or something of that sort. So that's why the session ID should not be present in the URL because they can be bookmarked or shared and so on the URLs itself. So that is one thing. Another thing is there is no proper session timeout in place. So many times it happens that the web applications after login, if the user, uh, you know, does not perform any activity for like for five, 10 minutes, the web application will not log out or end the session. So what happens is sometimes the users will just close the browser tab. They'll not log out of the application cleanly so in this way the session is still active because there's no session timeout present and if another user uses the same computer and he tries to open the web browser he'll be getting access to that web application as the first user again so there is no session timeout which could have been like two minutes five minutes depending on the application 
that could have prevented this from happening. So that is another thing in authentication failures. So let's look at examples over here. And looking at the examples, uh, these things are obviously only for educational purpose only. And we look at this user allies over here who has an account in two applications. That is one is the food ordering web application. And the second is the banking web application server. So now over here, this user allies uses the user ID as allies and password as secret one, two, three on this particular food ordering web application server. And then later on, this web application server has one security flaw. Obviously it has many, but we'll just come to that in a while. One of them is that the server does not save passwords in hash or salted hash and so on it saves it in plain text in the R database so it's like we don't care about security we just care about delivering food and so on so we'll just save it in plain text so that is their motto they don't want to use hash and everything so the server will obviously respond you know successfully because that is actually the user id and password of allies so post that what allies does it she'll use the same user id and password obviously the user id may differ but just for this example let's consider user id is same across both the application and the password she'll use the same password over here again that means the banking web application server uses the same password that is secret123 along with the same user id now the server itself again will obviously say successful login and help allies to perform our activity and so on on the banking web application now what happens is this particular food ordering web application server was recently compromised by some sql attack or something and then later on there was this user dart who got hold of these plain text credentials since the credentials were plain text and not in hash form they are very easy to be you know used again and check uh, for any other application and so on so first thing is this user dart over here will try to use this user id and password which was obtained from the food ordering web application since it was compromised and then later on this user allies actually uses the same set of credentials for the banking web application server as well, which should not happen you should not reuse the credentials it should be different for different web applications so once dart does this Obviously, this banking web application server does not have multi-factor authentication in place, which, you know, would be if it was present, the banking web application server may send a request to uh, may send some, uh, you know, one time password to uh, the registered users that is allies and then later on she would have that code or something which you could share to authenticate, but that is not present over here. So obviously if that thing was present, Dart would not have access to that code, which Allies has, and he will not be able to move further. But since the multi-factor authentication is absent over here, then this user Dart gets a successful login and he can do various malicious things like make payments and so on. So that's how it is. That's why multi-factor authentication plays an important role over here. And second thing is obviously you make sure the credentials are not saved in plain text that we have covered already in the previous risk and also the user allies should be using different set of credentials for different web applications coming to the next example over here we do have a user bob and there's a web application server over here which is present and the user tries to log in over here first and with the user id and password it's a correct user id and password bob is not uh, you know trying to perform any attack or something and the lead on what web application server does is it will first create a session id on the server end so it will create a session id over here which says bob ses session sorry session id and then later on obviously these things will be present in a database table but just for demonstration i have you know mentioned it that way and they'll not be only bob there will be multiple other users as well so bob is present over the session id is now present on the server side server will send a request that is hey i accept your credentials uh, user id and password are correct <coughs> sorry and it's like okay i will send you the session id it will send the session id to the client that is the web browser 
and it will basically the web browser will use this particular session id always uh, for request of this particular site or web application uh, so that the server will understand that this is bob only so then later on bob will perform some normal activities like daily activities on this web application server and obviously the uh, client browser will send the session id always so web application server uh, has the same session id okay so it will authenticate and you know allow or permit the communication so later on bob is like okay i'm done with my activities i need to log off for the day so i'll just log out from this web application so after once the client that is bob will send this logout request the web application server what it does is it sends a response it's like okay i accept your uh, request and i'm telling the client browser to actually clear the session id so it's doing the right thing but what it does is it does not clear the session id of bob on the server end or it does not even make it inactive so it's just present over there lying down we can see it over here that this particular session id is the same one which was created earlier now what happens over here is bob tries to send a, a login request the next day again with the same user id and password and the web application server does not create a new session id and has the same session id present for bob it sends the same session id again to the client so this is nothing but session id reuse so this session id is not being discarded or something and there is a new uh, there is no new uh, session id created over here for each request so that means if this particular bob session id is compromised in any way like using uh, cross site scripting or you know session id in url and so on then later on there'll be some other malicious user who gets hold of the session id can send request to the web application server and it will actually go as the user bob and it is always active the session id even though the, it's telling the browser to clear it the use malicious user can add this uh, session id and you know pretend to be bob so that's why session id reuse should not happen and for each login and logout request the session id has to be regenerated and so on and obviously there should be some complexity it should not be like suppose this is like 789 it's ending with that right so the next session id should not be like 790 which is easy to guess it should be very different random should have more complexity the length should be more and so on so this was a high level overview of identification and authentication failures hope you guys liked the video if you guys liked it please do give a thumbs up uh, if you all have any queries please do ask me in the comment section below and please do subscribe for more upcoming videos thank you and have a great day take care